I think we'll start this out with an example of what the hell the chain is going to have a task. Grab by the function. Qualifier. Yeah, we might be wrong. Well, in order to understand that, we need to understand the So which kind of level do you want? So now I can no longer get to my boogers. check it out. Naturalistic teaching. This is, as an in-home BCBA, one of my absolute favorites, because I like to think of it like, hey man, Clique's like contrived, man. In-home's all about like letting the contingencies go, dude. They just happen, right? And you like totally capitalize on the moment, man. I absolutely love that as a way to describe naturalistic teaching. <laughs> I felt like a little bit of dude coming yeah, out. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Little bit. With the, with the, What's the turtle? What's the... Oh, I Nemo? can't think of the turtle's name from Nemo, but yeah, yeah he's one of my favorites. Yeah, <laughs> just ride the wave, smartest. dude. Yeah. yeah, it's totally cool. <laughs> so, you're going to take that discrete trial training piece, right? Keep that in your head. You got those ABCs that we've been working with. But instead of, like, at a table where you remove all the reinforcement, you present the discriminant stimulus, and you're tight, and you're controlled, and the kid has to do exactly that to earn it, and that's all they can do, and that's all they're working on. This is way chiller. So it's more like... The skills are already present, they just need to have that frequency increased, <laughs> reinforced. <laughs> um, so what you'll do is like, it's a great example for like playing soccer, right? So the first thing you're doing is you're going to manipulate the environment. So what does the kid need? He needs a soccer ball. So you're going to put one or two more soccer balls in the environment. And then you're going to entice or play with the ball and try to get the kid interested in it, right? So you, example would be the kid's like standing here and I'd be over here. And I'm all going back and forth, and you can't see my feet, but I'm going back and forth with the ball. And he starts, like, looking and attending to the ball, and you're like, yeah, come here. That's great looking at the ball. Let's play some soccer. And you just use reinforcers and tokens and all these ideas to shape behavior naturally as it kind of presents itself um, instead of contriving the whole scenario. It's a little harder to just do. I definitely think um, doing a lot of um, DTT gets you used to the structure of how to think about how to do it. It's definitely kind of like a technician level up <laughs> kind of way of teaching. Um, but usually I've done more like imaginative uh, play, other DTT skills that you were doing at the table. Now we want them to generalize and become independent because you're able to be like, this kid now says hello 10 out of 10 times across three technicians. And then you're going to be like, let's go see if he says hi to mom at home and program from there. You're going to do the same type of prompt. So you're going to have manipulating the environment, right? Mom comes in the room and the kid's playing his game, and you'll prompt, if he doesn't attend to it in like five seconds, you'll be like, hey kiddo, let's talk to mom. And he'll go, hi mom. And you'll be like, awesome saying hi. Yeah, mom will leave the room, comes back in a little bit, mom comes back in the room. You know, just kind of naturally as she's maybe coming home from work or something like that. And that kind of process and reinforcement and prompting, very naturalistic, um, will generalize and create independence in those skills. So naturalistic teaching is, probably one of my favorites. It's a lot of fun to do and it's a sign that uh, things are going well. So I hope you have fun doing it.